Hello, YouTube. Luigi here. Tonight I'm going to read a poem. The poem is titled, My Favorite Subject. The poem is titled, Marriage. It is written by Gregory Corso, an American beat poet. You remember the beats? Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, that era. Mostly centered in New York City. It's called Marriage. And curiously enough, this poem was the very first thing we studied on the very first day of my English class as a freshman at Rice University. I can't tell you who the teacher was, who the professor was, but I can tell you this. There was a cute little girl from Mississippi in that class, and uh, her name was Patty Anderson. Today she's Dr. Patty Anderson, and I don't know why I mentioned that. Okay. I may occasionally take take a sip of lemon water because my throat is dry, but I'm going to try this anyway. Okay? Marriage. Should I get married? Should I be good? Astound the girl next door with my velvet suit and Foster's hood. Don't take her to movies but to cemeteries. Tell her all about werewolf bathtubs and fork clarinets. Then desire her and kiss her and all the preliminaries, and, and she going just so far, and I understanding why. Not getting angry, saying, You must feel. It is beautiful to feel. Instead, take her in my arms and lean against an old crooked tombstone and woo her the entire night, the constellations in the sky. When she introduces me to her parents, back straightened, hair finely combed, strangled by a tie, should I sit knees together on their third degree sofa and not ask, where's the bathroom? How else to feel other than I am? Often thinking Flash Gordon soap. Oh, how terrible it must be for a young man seated before a family and the family thinking, we never saw him before. He wants our Mary Lou. And after tea and homemade cookies, they ask, what do you do for a living? <laughs> Should I tell them? Would they like me then? Say, all right, get married. We're losing a daughter, but we're gaining a son. And then should I ask, where's the bathroom? Oh, God, and the wedding. All her family and friends and only a handful of mine, all scroungy and bearded, just waiting to get up the drinks and food. And the priest. He looking at me as if I had masturbated, asking, Do you take this woman for your lawful wedded wife? And I, trembling what to say, Pie glue! I kiss the bride and all those corny men slapping me on the back. She's all yours, boy! <laughs> and in their eyes you can see some obscene honeymoon going on. Then all that absurd rice and clanky cans and shoes. Niagara Falls, hordes of us, Husbands, wives, flowers, chocolates, all streaming into cozy hotels, all going to do the same thing tonight. The indifferent clerk, he knowing what was going to happen. The lobby zombies, they knowing what. The whistling elevator man, he knowing. The winking bellboy knowing. Everybody knowing. I'd be almost inclined not to do anything. Stay up all night. Stare the ho hotel clerk in the eyes, screaming, I deny honeymoon. I deny honeymoon, running rampart into those almost climactic speeds, yelling, Radio Valley, catch shovel. Oh, I'd live in Niagara forever, in a dark cave beneath the falls. I'd sit there, the mad honeymooner, devising ways to break marriages. A scourge of bigamy, a saint of divorce. But I should get married. I should be good. How nice it'd be to come home to her and sit by the fireplace and she in the kitchen aproned young and lovely and wanting my baby and so happy about me that she burns the roast beef, roast beef <laughs> and comes running to me and I get up from my big papa chair saying, Christmas teeth, radiant brains, apple death. God, what a husband I'd make. Yes, I should get married. So much to do, like sneaking into Mr. Jones's house late at night and cover his golf clubs with 1920 Norwegian books, like hanging a picture of Rimbo on the lawnmower, 
like pasting Tanatuga postage stamps all over the picket fence. Like when Mrs. Kindhead comes to collect to collect for the community chest, grab her and tell her there are unfavorable omens in the sky. And when the mayor comes to get my vote, tell him, what are you going to stop people killing whales? And when the milkman comes, leave him a note in the bottle. Penguin dust. Bring me penguin dust. I want penguin dust. Yet if I should get married, and it's Connecticut and snow, and she gives birth to a child, and I am sleepless, worn, up for nights, head bowed against a quiet window, the past behind me, finding myself in the most common of situations, a trembling man, knowledge with responsibility, not twig smear, not Roman corn soup. Oh, what would that be like? Surely I'd give it for a nipple of rubber Tacitus, for a rattle a bag of broken Bach records, tack della Francesca all over its crib, sew the Greek alphabet on its bib, and build for its playpen a roofless Parthenon. No, I doubt I'd be that kind of father. Not rural, not snow, no quiet window, but hot, smelly, tight New York City. Seven flights up, roaches and rats in the walls. A fat rake, you know, like screaming over potatoes, get a job. And five nose runny brats in love with Batman, and the neighbors all toothless and dry haired like the hag masses of the 18th century, all wanting to come in and watch TV. The landlord wants his rent. Grocery store, Blue Cross. And gas. Gas and electric nights of Columbus. Impossible to lie back and dream telephone snow, ghost parking. No, I should not get married. I should never get married. But imagine if I were to marry a beautiful, sophisticated woman, tall and pale, and wearing an elegant black dress and long black gloves, holding a cigarette holder in one hand and a highball in the other. And we lived high up in a penthouse with a huge window from which we could see all of New York and even farther on clearer days. No, I can't imagine myself married to that pleasant prison dream. Oh, but what about love? I forget love. Not, not that I'm incapable of love. It's just that I see love as odd as wearing shoes. I never wanted to marry a girl who was like my mother. And Ingrid Bergman was always impossible. And there may be a girl now, but she's already married, and I don't like men, and, oh, but there's got to be somebody, because what if I'm 60 years old and not married, all alone in a furnished room with pea stains on my underwear, and everyone else is married but me. All the universe is married but me. Ah, yet, well, I know that were a woman possible as I am possible, then marriage would be possible. Like she, in her lonely alien god, waiting for her Egyptian lover. So I wait, bereft of two thousand years, and the bath of life.